very first YouTube video, and I thought that I would show you one of my favorite games. It, it was played in 2012 between Grandmaster Leon Hoyos, or Manuel Leon Hoyos from Mexico, and Christian Trulia from Romania. Here's a couple photos of them. Let me see. Um, yeah, I, I, I know a bit about Hoyos. He 2012 was a pretty good year for him. He won the U.S. Open that year. But unfortunately for him, he didn't qualify for the U.S. Championship because he was representing Mexico. But enough with that. Let's get on with the game. This is one of my favorite games because it really demonstrates a, a, a strong minor piece against a passive minor piece. Good piece versus bad piece. So Leon Hoyos, he play, he's white. And truly is black. He starts with C4, which I believe is his main move. I believe he plays it almost exclusively. So truly responds E5, G3, Knight C6. This is just all standard opening moves. G6, Bishop G2, Bishop G7, E4. So now it's a bot Binnick system. Uh, this was popularized by world champion Mikhail Bot Binnick. I, I believe he actually created it too. I'm not 100% sure on that. But yeah, the system, white, it's a really good system for white. I, I, I find it more pleasant for white, but white often plans to play f4, sometimes even d4 and b4. Really flexible system. And we'll see how the game goes. d6, knight e2. Put the knight on e2 to um, get out of the way of the f pawn. Because if the knight was on f3, he'd have to move. Say if there was a knight here, he'd have to move, and then to play f4. So it saves the tempo. And sometimes he after f4 and they take it. You want to take back away the knight sometimes, and the knight controls d4. There too, it's out of pegs on f3. Black responds knight e7. Black can play knight the knight on e7 or f6 in these lines. On f6, again, it would have to move to play f5. But the, uh, the real reason white plays knight e7 is to... What, I mean, black plays knight e7 is to more often than not capture on f5 with the knight. And Strawn point this d4 square so he can actually plunk a knight in on d4 without the knight taking it and, taking and messing up his pawns. Um, because with a pawn on d4, it's much easier for white to play. He can go f4 really easy without worrying about what happens when black takes it. So anyway, it's really enough of this opening. d3 standard moves. There should be six. And now you have this move, knight d5. The idea is if... Black, take, black can't take with the knight because there's a fork. And if black ever takes with the bishop, say the knight goes somewhere. This is really bad. No, dad! Sorry about that. This is really bad for black because um, this pawn right here is backward pawn and you just need to... White just puts a rook on there and he pressures it forever. Maybe stuff like queen c2. Much easier for white to play. This should be six, knight d5. Okay, so black plays queen d7, possibly wanting to exchange his bishop for bishop on g2. So here, white plays bishop g5, threatening to bring a knight to f6. And then black would have to give up his bishop for the knight, and these squares would be weak without any dark square bishop. So understandably, black plays f6, bishop e3. White pretty much just played bishop here to provoke f6. No! And then, so, black plays f5. And now he's ready to take with the knight. But 
white didn't take on f5, so he might go 